Hey, it's Mike here, and today we are going to look at bread, but we are simultaneously going to be looking away from gluten because it appears that there are some non-gluten or gluten-free things that may be causing the same digestive upsets that people experience that lead them to believe that they are gluten intolerant. There are many potential causes, but we're gonna look at three in particular that range from agricultural practice to just the baking process. So this isn't a be more afraid of food situation. This is a you might not have to be afraid of gluten anymore situation. But real quick, I've been talking about it forever and now I am finally releasing my cookbook. It is Mike's Whole Vegan Cookbook. It is officially live. You can go and buy it at MikeTheVegan.com, which I'm also launching right now. I'm launching so many things just in time for Christmas. So the link to that will be in the description and I'll talk more about it at the end. But right now back to not gluten. Now notice that a large portion of people I know believe that they are gluten intolerant because it's their experience. They will eat a gluten containing food and then they will become bloated or nauseous or sick in some way. So I wanted to investigate and see if there were any other reasons besides gluten that people might be getting these symptoms. So let's go. Number one is glyphosate bath, AKA Roundup bath. You're probably familiar with the company Monsanto's Roundup, the active ingredient of which is glyphosate. And I was really shocked when I heard this and that is that wheat farmers in many areas will spray their crop with Roundup to kill it all off at the same time, and this is called desiccation. So it dries out the whole field evenly, and then they can harvest a couple weeks earlier. And as this study mentions, glyphosate is a probable carcinogen, according to the WHO, just like red meat. But the cancer connection seems to be limited in studies to people who spray it with the link being non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. But the concern I wanna talk about here is how it might give you that post-gluten tummy ache. From this study in the Journal of Interdisciplinary Toxicology, it appears that animals given glyphosate experience digestive disruptions. Quote, fish exposed to glyphosate develop digestive problems that are reminiscent of celiac disease. It may do this by disrupting the gut bacteria in animals, preferentially killing beneficial forms and causing an overgrowth of pathogens. From this other study, you can see examples of this. Salmonella happens to be resistant, while lactobacillus is susceptible to it. So in other words, it's like a really crappy antibiotic that only kills the good guys. Thanks, Monsanto. Furthermore, this overgrowth of pathogens can lead to a disruption of your intestinal lining, AKA leaky gut. Quote, pathogens through their activation of a potential signaling molecule called zonulin, induce a breakdown of the tight junctions in cells lining the gut, leading to quote, leaky gut syndrome. And something tells me that none of this is going to feel good. I mean, after all, our good bacteria digest food, the opposite of which is indigestion, which happens to be what many people feel after eating gluttony foods. So quick summary, the herbicide Roundup is being sprayed directly on wheat shortly before it is harvested, which may lead to a sort of probiotic bomb, which then causes some intestinal distress. Now I do wanna present both sides here and Texas wheat does say that in the US at least, this is not that common of a practice and it's not being sprayed in the super high amounts that people say it is. On my own farm, I use glyphosate well before I plant wheat to provide a clean planting environment. Sometimes I use glyphosate after harvest to do the same thing, to keep the field clean. So he might not be practicing desiccation, but he still is spraying glyphosate on his field once, maybe twice a year. He didn't need to practice desiccation because it is often only necessary in areas of the world with somewhat shorter growing seasons like the United Kingdom. From this paper, in 2007, the level of glyphosate in wheat exceeded the 0.2 milligrams per kilogram limit, but in other years, it did not. However, some UK wheat samples have clocked in at 2 0.3 milligrams per kilogram, which is about 11 times higher than the safe limit. However, these safe levels are not only based on industry funded science, but they are also based on glyphosate alone, which is allegedly not harmful to humans because it can't penetrate our cells. But in actual Roundup, glyphosate is accompanied by other chemicals that make it more powerful and possibly penetrate our cells, which are called adjuvants. So this is a bit like scientists studying bullets without a gun and being like, we have concluded that these bullet things are absolutely harmless. Look, they can't even penetrate my skin. Uh, would you like cash or check? I'll just take cash, thanks. And I know we are not talking about celiac disease specifically here, but from this graph, you can see that as glyphosate spraying on wheat has increased, so has the incidence of celiac disease. Yes, basically everything bad has also increased in that period of time, but it's worth noting. And that red glyphosate line is from USDA data, so take that, Mr. Texas Wheat. 
So I would say this is compelling, but not necessarily set in stone until we have, say, some clinical trials showing people eating low glyphosate bread versus high glyphosate bread and see how they respond. But it could offer an explanation for people who maybe eat bread one time and feel fine, and the next time they don't. Perhaps that one piece of bread was made with some higher glyphosate wheat. And now moving on to number two, which is yeast. And I can tell you right now that this is probably not hurting the vast majority of people, but it's worth looking into. The insights into this come from sufferers of Crohn's disease who have symptoms such as bloating, cramping, and abdominal pain. Does that sound familiar? It sounds like the definition of gluten intolerance. And as Dr. Greger mentioned in his Nutrition Facts video on the topic, Bakers have the highest Crohn's disease mortality, and from a different data set, among the highest rates of Crohn's disease. Perhaps a hypersensitivity to yeast may be playing a role in Crohn's disease. He also mentioned this study where scientists poked the inside of people who had Crohn's digestive tracts with potential allergens such as peanuts and citrus. And here is one patient's reaction to yeast right there in the middle, ugh, gross. And the Crohn's group on a whole had a statistically significant immune response to yeast. And from this study, which put people with Crohn's on a yeast elimination diet and measured their Crohn's index, which includes things such as abdominal pain, which improved after eliminating yeast, they then gave them yeast pills and it got worse. And another very interesting fact, if your gut bacteria is out of whack, then you could have a problem digesting yeast. Yeast digestion is performed by specific bacteria that we have gained since drinking beer and baking bread. Because of this, one treatment for Crohn's might simply be taking a pill with a bunch of this bacteria in it. No, I'm not saying that everybody who thinks they're gluten intolerant is automatically suffering from Crohn's disease, but in the US, our current estimates are about 780,000 people, and it can often be underdiagnosed. And it's just very hard to diagnose with nearly half of people with Crohn's having visited the doctor 10 times before it was diagnosed. But the question here is, is it possible that people who don't have Crohn's disease are also having an adverse reaction to yeast? Maybe not, but I think that this should be on people's radar and that we should do more studies on this. And you can imagine if somebody was reacting to yeast, they could totally convince themselves that they were gluten intolerant by going home with some organic wheat and baking their own bread with all just natural ingredients and active dry yeast and bam, they can have a response and believe it was gluten. I guess the easiest way to test this would just be trying to eat some unleavened bread. All right, now to number three, which is a quicker one, and that is bromated flour. I'm gonna resist making some bro jokes, but the stuff is serious. It's been banned in a lot of countries, the entire European Union, China, South Korea, Sri Lanka, Canada, Australia, Brazil, Peru, and Colombia. Surprise, surprise, not banned in the USA. Despite being a carcinogen and an oxidizing agent, which is interesting because oxidative stress is implicated in every major disease, including cancer, but potassium bromate, which we add to bread to condition it and bleach it, is a genotoxin. Fun stuff. India and the US do allow it. India allows 50 parts per million and the US allows 75, but the US also requires it to be put on the labels of foods, which is why the Environmental Working Group was able to compile a list of foods on their site. This includes everything from pizza dough and French bread to cakes and rolls, all that gluten-y stuff. Now the industry's response is that it is neutralized during baking, but this study seems to show otherwise. There's still bromate in there after it's baked. Now, would this actually give you a stomach ache though? Well, oxidation does lead to inflammation, which can be irritating, but I really wanted to include this just because it's a dangerous thing to have in food. People should be aware of it and we should be pressuring our companies to not put it in their bread. Okay, so by this point, you realize that there can be a lot of random crap in bread that could be making you feel bad. So what's the best way to maybe figure out if it's gluten or not? And I would have to say something which might blow your mind, and that is wheat berries. A wheat berry is the entire wheat seed, so you could go to the grocery store and get an organic bag of wheat berries and go ahead and cook them and add nothing and just see if you have a reaction. There won't be any glyphosate because it's not allowed on organic farming, there won't be any yeast because you didn't add it, and there won't be any of those other weird processed ingredients from store-bought bread. At this point, I again wanna emphasize that all this doesn't mean that you should be afraid of bread. I just think it's good to take a level-headed look at what could actually be causing something. And in this case, you could expand your diet if you realize it's not actually gluten. 
And I will be doing a future video looking directly at gluten and seeing how dangerous it might be. So stay tuned, maybe subscribe for that. Now I wanna say a couple things about the ebook and the website. The ebook is Mike's Whole Vegan Cookbook and it has about 30 recipes ranging from sriracha baked fries and peanut butter cherry cookies to, to sweet potato sushi and our unicorn parfait, which is super awesome looking. It also has some discussion stuff like being vegan at the potluck and fortifying your own plant milk. And it's currently available directly on my website for $11.99. So you can get it in time for Christmas if you do celebrate that. And I do just wanna say that a lot of the proceeds for this are going to go toward my master's in public health tuition. So thank you. Now for the website itself. I originally created it with the intention of making another way to search my videos. I realized it was really hard for people to find a certain topic. So over time, I wanna archive all of the different topics in there and make it super searchable. I also be uploading articles or text versions of the videos with references and all that. So you can go and look at it or in case you can't watch my video, you can sort of read my video. And finally, I have a section called Mic Yourself in case you wanna start your own YouTube channel. It goes over things like cameras and lights and software and I'll add some more features to the site in the future. But for now, that's it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe and let me know down below what you thought about these three reasons that you might feel like crap after eating gluten. Are you gonna maybe try eating some wheat berries or some unleavened bread? And if you do, feel free to let me know, very curious. All right, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.